Okay, well, let's let's get this video started. So, week two of the NFL, uh, Washington Commanders versus the Detroit Lions. Uh, Detroit beats the Washington Commanders 36 to 27. Uh, Carson Wentz was sacked six times in this game. Um, Washington came out completely flat, could not get anything going whatsoever uh, on offense. Um, the defense was terrible in all phases of the game in the first half there. Uh, just, a, just a poor effort in, in the first half. Um, down 22 to nothing there at one point. Um, yeah, I, I guess at halftime they were down 22 to nothing. And then, you know, tell of two halves. Uh, the Washington Commanders came out in the third quarter, scored 15 points. Um, Carson Wentz woke up. Uh, there were definitely some halftime adjustments that were made. Um, you know, Carson Wentz came out in that first scoring drive, uh, got the ball to... Um, Curtis Samuel got the ball to Jahan Dotson, got the ball to Terry McLaurin. All three of our star wide receivers um, was able to get a, a touchdown pass to, um, I believe it was a, a Curtis Samuel who scored that first touchdown pass. I'd have to go back and see. Um, right now the stats are not coming up on NFL.com. But anyway... Um, Washington came back, made a game of it in the second half. Um, Detroit, meanwhile, went into a little bit of a slump. Um, they wound up having four drives in a row in which they had to punt. And then, you know, they, they finally scored. And after Washington had came within seven points, had a two-point uh, successful conversion, um, got the commanders back within seven points. I think that's when it was 22 to, to 15. And then Detroit came back and, and again, uh, <laughs> it's like the defense let up. And again, the secondary let us down. And Detroit came back and quickly put the, the game back, back up within two scores again. And then from there, it was kind of a, a trade of touchdowns. And then for some reason beyond anybody's comprehension, Ron Rivera decides it was going to be a great thing to go for a two-point conversion uh, when the commanders were only down by, uh, well, the extra point would have made it again just down by seven points. Uh, they decided to try for a uh, two-point conversion, which failed, so kept us at an eight-point disadvantage. And then Detroit came back and scored another touchdown and then put us then down by 15 points, and we just uh, never recovered after that. Um, and then at that point, we, we did have an opportunity where we could have uh, gotten in for a score. Maybe we did. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I think we did. And then uh, we did score. Uh, yeah, obviously we did score. And then we missed an extra point. So right there, had we not went for two points, stupidly, <laughs> um, on the previous scoring drive, even missing that extra point, we were we would have still been in good shape. Um, all we needed to have done was to have held Detroit, which we um, wound up not doing. Uh, and oh no, I'm wrong. Uh, we did ha we did hold them, um, but because of that, anyway, we wound up winning or we wound up losing. I, I should say by uh, nine points. So, right there. Um, even if we had scored a touchdown there uh, and gotten a two-point conversion, we tried to go for an onside kick, 
and that was probably one of the worst onside kicks I'd ever seen in my entire life. It didn't even go five yards. Um, just all around, uh, very poor game management by Ron Rivera in, you know, late in the game. I just didn't understand the two-point conversion there um, that or that attempt. I didn't understand. Um, was Scott Turner trying to go two straight plays running up the middle when time is, is not on your side um, and you didn't have any timeouts and you run two plays up the middle? I, I didn't understand that. Um, you know, there were there were chances that that this team could have came back and and tied the ball game certainly, and they didn't get it done. And but you know, what can you expect when you you spot the other team twenty two points in the first half? And and uh, you know, Washington, I don't think they got more than maybe one or two f- uh, first downs in the first half completely. So it was a horrible. The first half, I don't think I had seen that bad of play since probably, I mean, you could say one of those games um, back in uh, the, um, what was it, 2019 when we didn't have any quarterbacks. Like, you know, we had to sign a quarterback off of the, um, off of the street and we just didn't have much of an offense at that point. It was either that or I would say probably going back to that, that Monday night massacre uh, back when um, Michael Vick was still playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. And this was back during the Mike Shanahan days uh, before RG3. I think we still had um, – oh, I think this is when we had Donovan McNabb. And, of course, we all know what happened in that Monday night game. I mean, it was just – it was horrible. So that that first half certainly was shades of that. It was like I, I just you couldn't play worse football than what you saw in that first half. Second half, at least they did make some adjustments. They stopped the uh, Lions on four straight tries, and Washington started you know getting some uh, offense going. Carson Wentz came back, had a decent game. He did get picked once. That was off of, off of really a tipped pass, so it wasn't really necessarily his fault. Now, he did have some some passes that probably should have been picked off, were nearly intercepted. One horrible, horrible pass off of a, a flea flicker that everybody is sitting there going, where in the world was Carson Wentz throwing this pass to? Because uh, I think it was uh, to maybe Jahan Dotson, uh, down the field, Jahan was was covered. He might have been double covered, and then this pass sailed so far to the right. I mean, it was right in the the safety's hands, and he just he just dropped it. I mean, it would have been an easy pick. I probably could have even caught this pass. I mean, um, I mean not not to take anything away from an NFL player, but I mean, come on. I mean, it was it was just horrible pass, but. Um, other than that, though, he, you know, Carson Wentz did come back and he showed that he was, uh, that he played well. I mean, and it's kind of like what uh, Pat McAfee, uh, is it, is it McAfee or is it McAfee? I can't ever, I think it's McAfee. Anyway, uh, you know, what he says in this podcast, he says, you know, uh, Carson Wentz, when he plays great, he is like one of the best quarterbacks you'll see in the league. And then when he doesn't play well, he really doesn't play well and he wasn't playing well in the first half but it wasn't really his fault I mean you know his offensive line was not protecting him whatsoever the offensive line was getting blown up here and there um you know Detroit's second year um uh, defensive end just went in there and just had field day had about three sacks I believe on Carson Wentz there in the first half and just just um just not a lot of time, and I'm sitting there in the, you know, watching this, and I'm thinking, why didn't, why didn't Scott Turner at that point say, okay, let's start throwing, you know, some bubble screen plays into this. Let's get the ball quickly out of the hands of Carson Wentz. Let's, let's use some speeds on on the 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 uh, flats there to, you know, to just uh, slow up that 
that pass rush. You know, sometimes you have to use the the passing game as an extension of the running game because they were not getting any any yardage up the middle. And and so, you know, I, I think if they may have started making those types of adjustments earlier in the ball game, uh, possibly things would have been a little bit different. But they didn't make any adjustments until halftime. And that's unfortunate because at that point, you know, you've already dug your your hole so deep and they had quite a hefty hole to get out of which I mean they they very nearly got out of that hole but uh, it was just too little too late and like I said there at the end just some horrible game management on, on Ron Rivera's part um, you know I'm, I'm a huge Ron Rivera fan I love him but it, you, you don't you don't go for a two-point conversion when an extra point would have made it a seven-point ball game. I just I didn't understand that at all. Um, that that was that was dumb. It was very dumb. I can see if the game is tied, or well, not no. I, I can see if you're going in for uh, you're down by eight and you go in for a touchdown, and, and uh, or no no no. Let me take this back. I can see if you're down by seven. And you score touchdowns at the end of the ball game, kind of like the Giants game um, last year. I think it was last year. It was either last year or the year before that, when Ron Rivera, you know, rolled the dice and went for two. He wanted to go for the the win instead of you know the tie. I can kind of understand in that scenario. It's at the end of the ball game. You don't want to go into overtime. You just want to you want to end the ball game. But this was not one of those times. This was not one of those times. You know, you kick the extra point, you're down by seven, and then you try to play some good defense to get the ball back in hopes of, you know, on the next drive, you tie it up. Because worst case scenario, you you felt the two-point conversion. You're, now you're down by eight. And then... The next time you have to to play catch up again because Detroit scores, you go down, you score a touchdown, then you miss the extra point. Now you're still down by two scores, um, and a two point conversion would not have even things up. So you would have had to, have, you know, scored the touchdown and then go back and try to get like a field goal, and. Um, it was just poor. Poor all, all around. Offensive line to give enough. Definitely an F. Offensive line get gets an F. Secondary gets an F. Second, they had some good plays mixed in here and there. Fuller had some good plays in there. Uh, I'm done with uh, William Jackson the third. I'm sorry, but I'm done with him. He is not worth the, the, the price. <laughs> He's not worth the money. William Jackson the third's done. I think... I'd rather sit him and just, you know, put somebody else in. He's not worth it. Um, you know, bring back Danny Johnson. I don't know. Just anybody else but William Jackson the third at this point. I just don't – I'm done with him. Um, you know, the secondary is porous. Uh, the de- de- defensive line – I'll get it out in a second. Defensive line – Horrible against the run. Horrible. I don't know what happened. Um, they finally looked like more shades of the defensive line like they should in the second half. But, um, yeah, that, that first half was horrible. And then, you know, they allowed um, – they, they didn't have the contain there on, on the uh, edge and allowed for that sweet play, that little sneaky uh, sweet play that – net at Detroit I want to say it was like 50 yards or something like that um, and then of course the uh, the pass um, from uh, golf to um, uh, Swift was that his name Swift um, out of the backfield um, he had to fall down to catch the pass you would think there would have been some defender who could have ran up and just tapped him, and that would have been fourth down. No, he had plenty of time to get up and 
run into the end zone for a touchdown. I, I just horrible. Just plain out horrible. Um, you know, if I had to give a game ball out to anybody, I, I would say probably Carson Wentz for really soldiering through, being sacked six times, being pressured several times, and still, you know, uh, fighting hard and, and getting the team in a position for a chance to, for a comeback. Um, you know, give game balls out to... Um, Jahan Dotson to Curtis Samuel, who made some good plays. Um, Terry McLaurin made some good plays. Antonio Gibson made good plays out of the backfield as a receiver. Didn't really have a lot of good runs. He, I mean, he had some some strong runs uh, that were hard fault three or four yard runs, but just really could not get things going. He's not a he's not a short yards back either, but. He just really couldn't get a lot going from, from scrimmage. So um, I, I give no game balls to the defense. You know, I mean, I know they played better in the second half, um, but they folded it and, and allowed Detroit to come back and score and keep things out of reach and made it look pretty easy for Detroit to come back and do that after, you know, shutting them down for four straight drives. It's almost as if they fit, they felt like that they just could not hold them, you know. So, yeah, very disappointing. Um, we have Philadelphia at home next week. That's going to be a very tough game for the Washington Commanders. Um, yes, we could be staring at one and two. Definitely could be. Um, we're going to have to... We're going to have to contain Jalen Hurts. Um, you know, Philadelphia is loaded at wide receiver. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy, especially uh, the way that this defense is played. Uh, there's going to have to be some changes made. Um, but, you know, I don't want to look ahead too much to, to that game. I just hope that there's going to be some sort of uh, changes made throughout this week to prepare for the Philadelphia Eagles because I'm telling you, if the Commanders put a product out on the field next week like they did this week, it's going to be a very long season for this team. Um, I would say finally it looked like Jamin Davis came out and wanted to really prove himself. I thought that Jamin Davis played okay. Um, you know, he, he had that initial sack. Um, he came out and played decently in coverage. Um, so I, I can't really hate too much on Jamin Davis today. Um, again, I didn't see, I wasn't keying in on every play that Jamin Davis was in, but um, I, I didn't see him get burnt like he did last week. So I, I felt that Jamin Davis did okay. You know, Cole Holcomb played hurt today. Uh, he had, I think, like eight tackles in, in the first half. Uh, so you, you were not going to see a lot out of Cole Holcomb. Uh, David Mayo is David Mayo. Um, you know, Dron Payne had a good play. I, I kind of felt that we were not going to hear Jonathan Allen's name a lot because he's playing hurt, um, and that's unfortunate. But it's probably going to be that for a while because those groin injuries are hard to to heal up and honestly the only way that i think that allen is truthfully going to heal up from that he may have to miss a game or two I hate to say it but and he won't probably but um you know for him to really heal up and be 100 percent because i don't think we're going to hear his name a lot uh with him out there playing hurt anyway folks fans that that's that's what it was um you know it, it was a more exciting game there in the second half uh the commanders played better in the second half um but they have a long ways to go obviously we do have a good quarterback i know at at one point i was getting a little frustrated on twitter and i was saying jokingly of course i was saying you know should we just put you know heineke in especially after that that weird pass that that uh, got kind of got away from um, uh, Carson Wentz, but I mean, for all intents and purposes, Carson Wentz, I think he's proved to be a a, a
very good competitor, and I think he still is an upgrade over Heineke. Um, you know, he's going to have up and down games right now. I think it's just it's going to take probably a few games for him to really solidify with this team. Um, and they may not have three or four games to kind of work the kinks out. Uh, finally, I think I'll say with all this, as this video has gotten pretty long, but uh, I will say that, um, you know, we saw some injuries today, um, uh, some injuries on the defensive side, some injuries on the offensive side. We lost Chase Rullier again. It looked like he was holding the back of his knee. He just, of course, you know, came back from a knee injury. Um, that's not good. That's not good news for that offensive uh, line that played horrible today to lose Chase Rillier. Um We may have Wes Martin in there at center again. Um, so we lost him. Um, we lost uh, Two Hill today to an injury. I think uh, he may have had a concussion. Um, we lost. Um, we lost another. Uh, guy on defense, I can't think of who we lost, but, uh, but so about three injuries today that we had. Um, uh, the Chase Rullier injury, I'm really concerned about. The others, you know, I don't know just yet the severity of those, but I am really concerned with that injury for Chase. Um, hoping that Rullier, uh, you know, didn't have, you know, didn't re aggravate that knee injury. Or, you know, I don't even know if it's on the same knee that he had surgery on, but um, that, that will be something to see. So, um, again, the final score, uh, Detroit 36, Washington 27. Uh, next week, uh, Washington will be hosting Philadelphia um, NFC East matchup. Uh, so this will be a big game, very important game for Washington. Um, now it becomes pretty important because, you know, I almost feel like it's a must game, must win game for Washington. You know, you really don't want to go down one and two. You really want to try to to stay, you know, on the plus side if you can. And doing that against Philadelphia is going to be difficult. So let me know in the comment section what you thought of this game. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, seriously, now serious uh, talk, serious football talk, guys. Uh, what adjustments does Ron Rivera need to make during this week? Now, I don't see any coordinators being fired. I'm not sure if I see any coaches, like position coaches, being fired. Should there? I don't know, maybe. Maybe. The secondary has been awful. In my opinion, the secondary has been awful. Um, you got to play. I know they play a little better in the second half, but you got to play a full half, a, a full game. And the secondary is just, um, yeah. Let's just see. You just let me know in the comments section. Keep it clean, folks. Keep it clean here. Uh, support this channel, please. Uh, you know, sub subscribe to this channel if you can. Uh, when you do subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell uh, because I don't always release these videos at the same time every single day or every other day or whenever I have a chance to, to release videos. So just be on the lookout for that. I do try to set my videos as premieres most of the time so you have a chance to, to you know, uh, be looking forward to to those rather than to kind of sneak them <laughs> online which uh you know people don't always know that i have videos out so i do try to do that and that's that's not to annoy people at the uh you know the countdowns or anything that youtube puts on them but just basically just to allow people to see that hey there's a video that's coming up here on the uh, football maniacs channel you know let me go ahead and and uh, make sure that I'm notified so that when it's, you know, when it premieres, I'm able to sit and watch it. So, again, please support this channel the best you can. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at gsykes34. Um, I try to comment throughout the game, um, depending on how well the game goes. Uh, good comments, sometimes bad comments. Um, 
but um, yeah, you can definitely interact with me on there. Um, I have a Patreon page. Um, needs to be revamped, but you can visit Washington Football Maniacs on Patreon. Uh, you can support us on that. Uh, you can, if you just want to, you know, don't donate money to the cause um, to help keep the lights on, so to speak. Uh, you can donate through Cash App or Venmo. Um, anything you want to do to support this channel is greatly appreciated. And I appreciate all you guys watching. Until the next video, hell to the commanders. Seem to get out. But something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear.